Hello everyone, it's Friday night and it is weekender time once more. And we're back with another show filled with the finest gems of hobby news that we've mined from across the industry over the past seven days. Before we get into the show, we have this week's prize from store.ontabletop.com. A copy of the brand spanking new Nordic army book for Team Yankee and a big box full of Swedish S-Tank company for you to play with. If you want to be in with a chance to win, you need to be a subscriber to the channel. Pop a comment down below. And if you can do all the social media nonsense, that's really useful too. Otherwise, sit back and relax because your weekend starts here. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Weekender. I'm joined this week by Ben, Brother Lloyd, and Justin. Hello. <gasps> wow. To have a, a delightful stroll through the hobby and gaming goodness that we've been yes. over the last week or so. Mm. All the little, the little gems, the nuggets, the things you're too lazy to look for yourself online. <laughs> we bring it to you and serve it up on a platter. Uh, so, so we, 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 we really shall do. spoon feed them delicious news and information. Hmm. Yeah. Yummy, yummy. Thankfully, people other than I, me. Uh, I, say it, I say it more like foie gras. Is it foie gras? It's, it's foie gras. Yeah. Yeah. Force feed you force with force a straw. Force feed you until you're never <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ben wouldn't a, do that. He's all, uh, he's all vegetarian-y. I am. So, so hang on, we need to get a pipe and jam it into their mind hole? Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly a delightful that. image right there, isn't it? And then go, hmm, they're afraid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, very much like that. 100% like that. That is what we are doing to you. Throwing a net <laughs> over you and holding you down and forcing you to look at hobby. Oh, but, you know, you always got a chance of winning that prize. So really, that's true. In yeah. many respects, it's mm. uh, a service to the community and uh, not punishment. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> um, we are gearing up for a whole host of interesting bits and pieces mm. uh, for you this afternoon. But we're going to be kicking things off, as always, with the most important thing. Oh, yes. The one that keeps people coming back for more. Oh, mm. yes. The one that will never include STLs if I have my way. And I do. Oh, yes. <laughs> the Give it to me, Daddy. Hey. And this week, <laughs> this week, technically, it's a pair of companies. Oh, oh okay. Although... I'm only really going to be looking at one, and you'll see right. why in a second. Oh, it everything's is, so mysterious, Jerry. I am. By nature, a mysterious man. Uh, <laughs> it is World War Gaming. Oh. So, some people may be aware of World War Scenics, the purveyors of static grass and static grass applicators, and they do okay. flower tufts and stuff like that. Yeah. This is them actually just doing terrain and some miniatures and bits and pieces for gaming. Well, so, the, so this is the uh, the sister company for it. Mm. Um, they don't have a huge amount of miniatures. We'll start with the miniatures. Really, what we're here for is the terrain and the scenery. But we'll get there eventually. Ooh, nice Kill classic jets. fantasy minis, though. Calm Love yourselves. that little dwarf. The dwarf is good. Dwarf's not bad. Not uh, if you're uh, Disney. Annoyingly, annoyingly, if you are Disney, that's not going to happen. Uh, and also, annoyingly, the pictures are relatively big as well, which is really irritating. Oh, <laughs> you don't, you don't <laughs> yeah. have to twitch today. Oh! Look at the size of them. Oh, I love that. Oh, oh just, just paint the beard grey. Just paint the beard grey for me. Imbigulate. Imbigulate. Zoom in. Even look who's... Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, look at his ball thing that's all painted. That's cool. Yep. Yeah. The, he's the he's got a jar of stars. His jar. It's just hanging off him there. It's great. And this is where I trapped a universe of people I don't like. <laughs> it's the cat from uh, Men in Black. That's what it, it could be the cat <laughs> Men in Black, yeah. <laughs> so as you can see, classic dungeon crawly types. Mm. Uh, yeah, I like Ranger, these. Mm-hmm. Wizard, Barbarian, and Dwarf. I wonder what game that they could have spawned. Spawn who, who could have worked that out? Any, yeah. any at all. Uh, could be anything. Mm. Yeah. My broad really nice is that sword. As well. mm. Here, it's if you open that really image really. six more times, yeah. we can sort out this lack of dwarves going forward in the world. I mean, hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work they go. Yeah. 
I'll just leave that to the editor. They can just pop, <laughs> pop multiples in there. No, they won't. Ah, Don't even set them up. Sweet. They won't. <laughs> sweet, sweet like candy. He's very short for a barbarian, though. Ah, but he's, hunk, he's hunkered down. Yeah, he's ah, squatting. Yeah, so, yeah he's, yeah, he's squatting. He's braced. He's ready for it. He mm. wants it. I think if you put him beside the dwarf, the dwarf would be taller. Actually, just, probably, yeah. <laughs> well, again, this, this is how you argue with a dwarf. You can get down on their level. He's mm-hmm. no good, but not with a stance like that. You get kicked in the plums fair and fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose you have lowered yourself into the danger zone. That's true. Yeah. Uh, he was in the danger zone as soon as he put those Gary Glitter boots on. That's when he ended up in the danger zone. Danger zone. <laughs> <laughs> there are a um, substantial amount of goblins if you want oh. to do a goblin blood bowl team. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, is... I will say that chain wrapped around the neck, that's just a little bit suspect. Do you think this I like fan, fanatic special player should be called uh, Carradine? Is that what you think? <laughs> McCutnell? What? Some form of auto asphyxiation. Look at the tongue hanging out. He is I do like that, though. That's a, cool, that's a cool miniature with a nice little bit of yeah. story to that's, it. That's what yeah. happens when you roll a double. So yes. Bosh. Yeah. Yeah. I love it when the goblins have little pink bits. Mm-hmm. Mm. Tips of his ears and his little nose. Yeah. His little yeah. Nice attention to detail. Hello, is it just me or does he have an extra finger on one hand? Nope, it's just me. I'm being weird. (laughs) No, no, it looked weird to me and then I asked and then I knew I was wrong. He is very happy to be carrying that bomb. Yeah, the bomber is cool. It's a bomb. (laughs) It's the ball, guys. You should should drill that out and put little bits of sparkler in it. I mean, this is how you train your goblins to be faster runners. Give them a bomb. (laughs) If they get to the end zone, they can drop it. it If not, oops. Yeah. Oh, what the deuce oh, yeah. are those? Oh, no. Well, come back to them. We've got other Ooh, goblins to look out for. Oh, with a chainsaw. Oh, Jerry, I just saw something really cool. Hey, yeah, we did, yeah. And we'll get back to Chick. Cool your Jesus Christ on a bike. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, there's one of my favorite sounds. I like that all the goblins are kind of individual posing, yeah. individually posed as well. Mm. That's nice. Nice little it's, touch. It's a really, really nice set of I really um, are very fantasy good. football figures. Yeah, mm. you know this little guy's face just goes. Look at what I found. He's not. I mean, you get on, you cut a dwarf or a chaos warrior out of his armor because uh, you're going to be sent off immediately after you've done it. Yeah, get in, get out as quick as you can. That's has key. he has he got a goblin hand behind that, or is it a big power that answers that? Yeah, just bring up the Lloyd shot. I was thinking maybe it's a big power fist, but no, it's a goblin hand uh, behind it. Yeah, no, no. He he's just went into the tool shed and went. I need this. Why? I'm playing Blood Bowl. What? Mm-hmm. You can see everything you need, obviously. Blockers, blitzers, throwers, catchers. Troll. A big troll that can be used to throw your to goblins. Shock your... Can they yeah. throw goblins these days? They Remember can in the old still, days, they yeah. used to be yeah. snotlings. They needed to be small enough. Mm-hmm. They no, they can the, the throw, throw goblins. Stand. Really nicely designed. It is really good. Cool. Yeah. Let's see the. Oh, hey. no. Hey. 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 I was ahead of you. I knew where you were going, and I beat you there. All round the back of the troll for a good time. Well, what's he like in comparison to the others? See the group shot as well. We can see oh, the scale. We'll get the group shot in a minute. Lovely, lovely resin. Nom, 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 nom. There he is, happy, happy. And of course, that's, you have to get that booty shot in there that's again. A great, that's a great picture. I like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Look at all the adoring fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, wouldn't see that in Man City's ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like 20 people bust in from London at the bottom, and that'll be it. But yeah, the I think the the blood bowl slash fantasy football, whatever way you want to put it, really blitz is, nice. is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Really nice, unique one. And even if you don't need them all, there's a, a few mm-hmm. nice character type models in there like, that will do because, the job. Because they match up quite nicely to what a lot of people will be playing with from Games Workshop. You could even use these to represent some of the players that have actually got slightly got more experience as they've gone through, and you could use them to sort of use as your star players and things that you've got in your force. That would be kind of cool. So. See, I always think it's nice when you can pick up individuals like that because if yeah. you're playing a league and your team is growing and expanding, as it's growing, you can just buy in what you need as you need. Mm-hmm. I shall Why return do to they an not... earlier, earlier scream about GW doing this. If you're going to paint something white, don't show it on a white background, people. <laughs> just annoy me. I'm just yeah, saying. Mantis warriors. But the Mantis yeah, these, warriors are really cute. These are kind of weird. The heads are so tiny. It's because they're Space alien bug things. Yeah. I really I like the fact that they are different. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not just a, another space orc or that sort of thing, you know, mm. that you can put together a squad of something wholly unique. Mm. And uh, 
And okay, for some that games, I play really like, well. like Xenos Rampant and That's things like nice. that. They're just kicking yeah. around at the moment. Where, um, oh, they'd be perfect for the Doomed to use as the mm, cryptid yeah. alien exile faction. Yes. That have just landed on the world and then are getting absolutely ripped apart by crazy monsters. That's I would reckon that this force, all of the basic troops are the <laughs> male versions and then all the uh, leaders are the females. And they're uh-huh. just like, if you if you come back and you've not achieved it's, your mission, um, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> it's, very, it's very convenient that they just grew hands when they needed hands, though. Mm. <laughs> well, that's evolution in action. Well, I have claws. I can't hold the gun. I will grow hands. <laughs> Uh, although, it, here's the thing for you, Ben. You know it's going yes. to be a very strong faction because the survivors of war are the ones who get to come back, mate, produce the next generation, and then get munched. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Survival of the fist- fittest in many senses of the word. So, and then yeah. after Snusu time, nom, 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 Oh, I really like these. These oh, yeah. are super cool. Very oh. nice. Chaos cultisty looking that, guys. That dude on the left. With doing the kind of like power pose with the gun out front, he yep. is the best of that lot. I love him. He's he's awesome. Just standing there screaming, "I love heavy metal." I, I like yeah. them because they have a. If Mad Max happened in the future mm. of a mm. sci-fi world, not yeah, not yeah. our post-apocalyptic Earth, but you know what happens in the post-apocalypse whenever it was up to a sci-fi level, you'd end up with these lunatics mm. running about the place, going full master blastery. And they got a Judge Dredd sort of look to them too. Yeah, they do a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting Necromunda vibes. Mm. I mean, I'd like to see. Well. Ju- I'd like to see them as like a Stargrave crew, mm. or the enemies cool. that you come up against in Stargrave. Maybe I'd imagine them all to have kind of like really like annoying nasal accent uh, voices and stuff. Like we gotta get him, and zoom in and kill him now, and that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> suddenly, we're watching. Suddenly, we're watching an East cartoon. It's yeah. another week, another excellent impression by Ben. That's what people keep more funny voices. <laughs> more funny voices. Also, the fact that they've got you know they've got like little huskiness, yeah, yeah. faces, mm-hmm. so they wouldn't necessarily have to paint them as fleshy pink humans. No, yeah, yeah. You, know, you could go oh, for pink uh, and blue, yeah, alien aesthetic, or even or even go for orcs because he's not many mm-hmm. miles away from a pig faced orc as it is. Mm-hmm. Red is. eyes, pretty pig faced. Mm-hmm. Clearly, someone hit him in the shit face with a shovel. Yeah, <laughs> bong. Ah, my nose. They're brilliant. I really These like these guys. Them. The uh, the sci fi enforcers are really cute as well. Mm, very Cause... clean. Yeah, they've got a, a really nice. Could be android. Could be human. Mm. Um, you know, it's most Space likely class. some form of law enforcement. It's. Yeah. It's up to you what they are under that, because you can't tell what they are under that. Mm. They have a very gort look to them from the classic day they are stood still. And not that terrible remake with Kinenu. <laughs> it was god awful. I remember both of those. <laughs> oh, one of these was great film. The other yeah. one was horseshit. They're nice. Oh my God. Their armor design has made me think of them being really good to Tom. slot in as human Tau. Conscripts. Auxiliaries. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe. Part, part of the, the great Tau collective. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Because they've we got swear the, the, we're not sterilizing you. Those circles could easily be mm. painted as Tau symbols. Yeah. And then you just paint their armor up in their sort of ochre or red or something. None of us are going to argue with you on that one. Yeah. Are these metals we're looking at? Uh, I believe these ones are metal and some of the other are resin. Uh, if memory if you go to the end picture there, I think that's a resin. Boom. There that's, we go. That's a. Mm. Uh, oh, no, it's just grayscaled. Yeah, that's I can't tell. But regardless, little teeny tiny little Susan mm. of miniatures for you. However, I like them a lot. We're going to go and have a little truck to memory way. Oh, where should we start? Uh, Wild West. Okay, then. You <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of the stuff they do is uh, MDF. Although mm-hmm. they do also supplement that with resin and then occasionally some acrylic bits and pieces get in there. Uh, I was thinking suspicion in the Wild West that we're looking at, along with some of the um, World War II Normandy type stuff, is the earlier bits and pieces because they are uh, uncolored, require you to get in there and, and do some painting on them. Right. Um, but there's a lot of stuff later on which comes... Um, Painted or coloured or pre-primed, pre-colored, or whatever you want, yeah. to, you want to call it. But mm-hmm. obviously excellent for games like Dead Man's Hand. Look, mm-hmm. There's a little Malachi on top. Or if you like to do some Wild West Exodus. Mm. 
You could it might be small for Wild West Exodus because remember, Wild West Exodus is massive, so mm. they may not fit under that. Um, Possibly. Canopy. Possibly. Uh, I would say th- suitable up to 34 mil. So Ooh, I like the yeah. fact that they've actually got the the counter oh, the yeah. interior detail. That's a That's really nice. nice touch that a lot of companies don't do. So points for that. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, good. a nice set of general stores and stuff. You just put a barrel full of uh, hickory sticks out front in case a preacher comes to town and needs to mm-hmm. bop somebody course, outside the heat. Do they have a saloon? Because you can stick change the sign and be good saloon they as well. Do with have Let's see what's inside that. I it's hoping for tables. Uh, Bar and interior staircase, please. There we go. That's what I'm after. Oh, it has got tables. Oh, my God. <laughs> or table. <laughs> I have to reserve that when you come into town. Uh, no player so piano, though. Firewater saloon. There was oh, something I was looking at. Mm, it'll probably come up as another indie. Don't worry about it. But there is somebody who does uh, piano and additional tables and stuff. Right. You'll see that. I'd really like that. Yeah. But, you know, as... I think probably the door's a bad position, though. Just <laughs> well, I mean... You're I'm constantly sure you have to move, move your chair when people are looking to go in and out. That, I'm and I suppose if it's a cold day, you'll be getting drafted on the whole time. Mm. Mm. Outrageous. Yeah. It's a saloon. You're probably getting puked on. Well, that's, <laughs> that's true. Well, I suppose whenever people are getting chucked out. Oh, I do like the wee jail cool. as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we're not going to get to see that. On- oh, oh yeah, dead end. There's a lot to look at. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> can't believe we skipped the jail. Uh, well, you know, I can't believe that you put me in charge of this, and yet it happened. <laughs> so we just have to live with that, I feel. Oh, that's amazing. Need so someone uh, quoting uh, quoting the Bible from up the top. Oh, right. Oh, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm not going to say anything, right? But you defaulted to the American in saving uh, Private Ryan. Ryan yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I automatically went to Muller in, um, in Glorious Bastards, where <laughs> it's, it's the German up top. People <laughs> off constantly. Bam, 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 bam. I mean, my first thought was is that the one where the poor bastard got hung off it? And had to hang there after yeah, getting shot in the leg a couple of well, times. No, it's 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 not that because um, that was a an actual fool. Oh, I know, I know, Church. but that's that's where my head went. Brilliant, though. Yeah, I really I like, like that. This lots uh, of detail worked into it. So yeah, good kit. Yeah, and you can see there, scale wise, it's tall, lovely. very mm-hmm. tall. Yeah, yeah, bit of height in the table, which is what you want in life. Whenever you're aiming mm-hmm. to. Um, I love how much engraved up. detail they've done on some of the, the ruined houses and the regular houses. There's a lot on it, which is probably reflected in the price of the kit. As I was told a long time ago, the the amount of time the laser has to take to burn Ooh. through it is really what oh puts, the, the, mm-hmm. puts the price in. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, cutting shapes is easy. Doing engraving takes a lot of time. Yeah. But as you can see, they also do bits and pieces in resin. I like all the bits and bobs. That's nice. Quickly oh, and that's had the, the rendering sort of blasted off it. There. Yeah. That's cool. So I like that. Probably stood back bits. Mm-hmm. And even things like all the engraved shutters and bits is and pieces. It, on is it really 49 nice. pounds for one? Yes. Slash new. 50 quid for one. So 50, 50 quid for one. But Depending on which one you get. Depending yeah. on which one you get. Cost changes. And then they also have um, the option for some things to be painted so some of the resin stuff you'll see later on you can buy it painted or unpainted and again that will increase the cost mm. but so much you, detail you get, you get what you pay for yep. yeah you always do and again they're they're doing the old trick of multiple layers of HDF so that adds even more detail yeah I like that so respectable Throw mm-hmm. some of these that's a nice set. I'm a big that. fan of the scatter stuff, like all these little tiny yeah. bits. They're uh, they're a nice addition. The blasted you know. tree trunks. Are mm-hmm. great. We actually have some of those. Yeah, somewhere. Don't know where they went. Walk about. No, they, I know exactly where they are because they were being used during the dim week. Oh, fair. Mm. Oh, you're Good in the wrong walls. room. Otherwise, I could tell you where mm. they were in comparison to. You. Uh, I set resin walls. Lovely dead horse with a cart, which oh, I mean is good for any your lovely any horse period. Is dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's always good to have a a nice objective or just 
interesting to bit fight of cover. over in the middle of the trenches yeah. or something. Yeah, you know, you don't always have to hide behind sandbags. Sometimes you can no. find a cart a dead horse, just as yeah. good. I mean, the, um, the stopping power of a horse, as far as bullets go, is must be worth at least two or three sandbags deep anyway. So yeah, yeah. Or as I saw in one movie, someone just dragging a dead body in front of them to defend them from the bullets. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh, this is a nice mixture in this. Yeah. You got your yeah. grenades, you got your tarps, your jerry cans. Yep. Little objective things, dragon's mm. teeth, and various defense line barbed wire sections, all the rest. So the barbed wire, I, mean, I think the barbed wire is like four pounds for a single set, but you can go up to like 140 pounds if you want 30. Wow. Strips okay. of barbed wire, all the barbed wire painted. Okay. Well, if you want to build the Somme, <laughs> that type of thing. Yeah, yeah. you want you want the defense in depth. Then that yeah. is very much doable. With these, mm. the um, oh, the trench net, the trench, trench network is really very, good very as well. Because apart from having your firing steps and your your sort of standard ones, there's even uh, there we go there. In fact, I'll just open that one up as well. You've got the little firing position, and behind it is a little step down into uh, Black Adder's office. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they've the got command. another one that doesn't have the firing step in position. Mm -hmm. It's just the the officer's barrack entrance, or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So it's just like a little half hole in the side of it. Really nice. And again, doesn't come with a two-way duck board. Another big set of which there's. Extensive amounts of trench work, so you can, you can buy the flooring as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you too. You can build your own trench system. Really good if you're trying, especially the scatter stuff is really good if you're looking to play something like O two hundred hours, zero two hundred mm. hours. Like mm -hmm. if you're diving into that and you want to build up stuff to kind of build a table out and add more character to it, these are really nice. You can buy like full sets of stuff as well. I don't know. I've never been that keen on above ground trenches. It's about as classy as having an above ground pool. Yeah, but it's it's one of those things where <laughs> if you're gonna do like what we've done with our own trench board, that thing is huge and takes up a lot of space. Yeah. <laughs> this at least you can pack away neatly. That's true. <laughs> Your other half doesn't shout at you for leaving <laughs> mess out. Even beyond that, um, having to duplicate boards. If you want to have a trench system, then you're gonna have to have a second non-trench system board if you want to play anything else mm -hmm. uh, even if it's just a cover to go over the top of it it's just a pain in the hole love that as well yeah Good yeah it's a rubble little rubble section and a smashed up car blown up car so you can yeah. see some of the uh marvel superhero people just dancing on top of it while the family inside burns <laughs> superheroes don't care about regular people i like the fact they modeled the glass into it normally you just get nothing yeah. mm -hmm. it's a nice I mean, touch they're they're Wise beyond their years in that respect. Um, this is very good for Necromunda as well, especially if you remember the old Necromunda set. Um, that so they, they Jerry's to, Necromunda. So the the card and yes, of screw course, end. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, these are very similar in that respect to it, um, which is nice. And again, bits and pieces using the, the little resin objectives and toxic spills and stuff that you can dress the table with in between push people into which is a, yep. a nice mm -hmm. way of breaking up the flatness of mm -hmm. mdf kits mm -hmm. even having that although i would replace that mess underneath it with just a tube just go down to a hardware store and, and pick up a bit of drain pipe of the requisite Oops. side or yeah. just use the the inner lining of like you know a tin foil tube mm -hmm. don't have to buy anything at that stage depends how big that is but that's going to be three inches deep because that's a standard size which means mm. that's probably going to be about two and a half to two and three quarter inches uh, fair but possibly a pringles tube maybe pringles tube might be a bit too big which is what i just yeah. said just although go, you could put it into the middle of that plastic people it's okay. going to cost you go spend pound. money it's you could uh, you, you could, could probably pay the money for this yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> you could probably afford to, to buy you some afford pipe. To just buy a piece of tubing of the requisite like size. Oh, I love the engraving they've done on the acrylic there to make yeah. it look like a hex metal grid. Very it, nice touch. Tournament arena ring where you just push a couple of people in and make them fight for you. That's what I was thinking of it rather than it being a landing pad. I was thinking of it with like a fight fighting mm. pit. Oh, one hundred percent. You put them in there and then they oh. bounce around in zero g, trying to stab each other up. Uh, Wong and the <laughs> abomination. Somewhere to keep space chickens. 
<laughs> Very true. Was there a space are. chicken wire? Way That's bigger. <laughs> We're vicious space chickens. Uh, <laughs> by the size of a chocobo. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a really nice, nice piece of kit. As you can see, they're mm. starting to introduce the old uh, coloration to it as well. So mm -hmm. various two-tone affairs. Like I say, there's some great stuff in there for sci-fi fiends everywhere. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure you to go away, please. Uh, and there's substantially more over the next couple of pages. Lots of different choices in terms of gangways and things like that. Yeah. So you can create very varied tabletops. And a whole host of sort of big kits and big feature piece, pieces as well as the small resin bits. I mean, these are... Importantly, height mm. to things. Height's yes. a massive thing that a lot of people miss out on their tabletops, especially for sci-fi games mm. and, and things like Necromunda, which, we, which we're talking about, because, of, you know, these are meant to be built up into huge hive cities. And yet you're only playing in like a space that's <laughs> the size of a bung like the height of a bungalow or something. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> having access uh, to all those high rise elements is really nice. Oh, yeah. I, I love the fact that it's... Ben uses a bungalow as a unit of measurement. <laughs> Bungalows and bags of uh, sugar. bags of sugar. You'll yeah. enjoy the you'll enjoy the XLBS in if you tune in for measurements and sugar. <laughs> Please stop. I've, I've heard this already. I don't need to hear it again. <laughs> Anyway, oh, per, per, per Jerry, been traumatized because you yep. can push them right out. off the top of that, and they fall yeah. way farther than normal and smash it to a pool of acid. The cargo containers with the yeah, the, although the just, pieces as well. Just going to say, don't be that person who actually flicks miniatures off the top after well, your friend has spent months painting them. I don't be that guy. Do that. I think don't be that actually, guy. I think they've actually gone and bought plastic tubes, tubes for, for the center. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's always worn me up about HDF kits. People ring after ring after ring after ring of wood to make something run. Just my yeah. bloody tube. See, you're coming. You're coming on board with my side of things. Oh, I've been bitching about that for years. Every time anybody <laughs> makes an HDF train, I'm like, just get a bit of flipping plastic tube. Yes, instead of do layer after layer after layer after layer after layer to build the actual engine part. Yeah, which is what I just said. <laughs> layers like onions <laughs> I'm really glad that this instruction wasn't yeah. wasn't um, here's the picture of the kit and then here's it finished like oh, the no. whole <laughs> how to draw an owl draw a circle draw an owl <laughs> do you know yeah. if you built a gaming table with a set of tubes that come up like that and connected it to a hoover and turned it on if you really <laughs> and had like a danger zone if you put your miniatures too danger close zone. so they get sucked in <laughs> <laughs> oh no that, that that's going to be like Star Wars episode 1 where Qui-Gon went no mm -hmm. right <laughs> ooh the signage is nice fantasying then obviously again some resin scatter pieces which are really cute mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. like your wells and bits and bobs uh, but then beyond that they've gone into uh, a whole host of resin buildings and then also some MDF-y ones as well really I like cool. these I really like these Look, you can tell what they sell. Sausage, beer. Beer. Magic. Magic. You need to be able to read for that one. Makes sense. <laughs> fish. Spider. Octopus. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing Creepy some kind alien. of fish monger. Well, well we've got a fish alien. monger. Or there's octopus headed mind flayers. Oh. It mind could be a mind flayer yeah, yeah. shop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's the, it's the, I swear it's not a cult cult. <laughs> That's well, some cool. I believe it's not cult. Good. Cult. Yeah. And then the Fantasy Village. Oh, that's beautiful. That is really good. Now, these are the resin ones, so you will pay a premium for these compared to the MDF ones later on, although the MDF ones are still fairly nice. It's the lovely detail on the roofs that I've seen across all of their terrain. <laughs> Just having it out with the texture to it, it makes a huge difference. It's, it's interesting really nice. you say that. Yeah. If, where is it? Uh, is it number three? Fantasy... Merchant House, there we go. Ooh, you get some siege engines too. Let's have a look at the roof, shall we? Oh, that's lovely. Little Raven up there trying to live its life while people fight wars around it. <laughs> you know? And there's little bits and pieces like that throughout a lot of the buildings, just little changes so it's not as sort of bland and flat as mm. it has, you know. Such a good idea. Like MDF is always going to be the same all the time. There's only so much you can do, but with mm. resin pieces, you can put in these interesting little featurettes in there as well. Yeah. Uh, What's quite nice as well, it, because so many skirmish games are shrinking in size in terms of table space. Yeah. So like three by three, two mm. by two in some cases, 
the cost for you to buy a table's worth of terrain is coming down, That's especially true. if you're... And so, you know, you might look at this and be like, I don't want to have to spend 500 pounds or whatever to fill a table. Well, if you're looking for the right game, you can sort of build it down to... Yeah, if you, you want to play something like the multi-award winning Moonstone. Uh, again, <laughs> yeah, that, that exactly. was going to be my next stop because this yeah. would basically make a perfect Moonstone village. Mm. I like that. Ooh, very nicely done. Yeah. Mm. They're very clever with how they do their... Uh, their laser cutting stuff with the the different layering. Mm -hmm. It's a nice addition. Mm -hmm. So after these, you, can you get that pre-colored seeing... and unpainted. So that's nice. Yeah. So, and oh, there, there see, there's uh, the one I want. That that village, yes. Bits and pieces that go into uh, the MDF one, which I mm -hmm. think is a really nice set of bits and pieces, and it's not so um, fantasy esque that you couldn't use it for Europe throughout a whole host of, of time periods up to and including yeah. Second World War. In fact, I think some of this reappears in the World at War range a bit further on. Yeah, I think out of the two, I would actually go for the HDF quicker. I like the look of it more. Mm. But again, that's down to personal preference at that yeah. point. I completely didn't see that it was an eagle burned into the door, and yeah. I thought it was a poppable man-shaped silhouette, so you could oh, see it's like running out of it. You were thinking <laughs> a blast shadow? Yeah, mm. or something like that, yeah. <laughs> Somebody crashing through the wall? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's not. But yeah, they are... Uh, they're really cool. They're a really nice set of, of bits and pieces from them, mm -hmm. including things like graveyards, bell towers, um, more historically accurate, historically accurate things. Some mm. siege stuff for Lloyd. Yeah, I, I do love that the stuff. the pot. You can actually change out what's in it. Mm. So boiling oil or nasty nastiness. Yep, or, or soup. Yeah, you I, that, I, so. I am not eating that soup. Have you cleaned out the pot before dinner, or has it still got some burning oil in it? <laughs> oh, no, see that that reminds me of my grandmother's tea kettle that she never washed. My so aunt actually scrubbed. Yeah, my my aunt scrubbed it down one time. My my nan went ballistic. Yeah, you're not supposed to clean them. Clean oh, I know them that. <laughs> Trust me, we we learned that lesson very sharpish. <laughs> do they have a covered bridge? Uh, I think they do. Oh, a challenge. Mm, a request. Because like, if you're doing a fantasy town, a covered bridge is a nice <gasps> addition. Oh, no, I just need to see them. Are those? <laughs> I thought it was in the uh, in the MDF one, although, like I say, Challenge. I've been looking at a few different ones recently, and I may be blurring the lines, which is why I know there's a piano and more tables and chairs out there for saloon. Uh, no, no, no covered bridge here. You could probably take the. You could maybe use the barn as some sort of covered bridge. Then, oh yeah, the yeah. yeah, yeah. You could make it into that. Mm -hmm. Just Would leave those side ones? panels out. Yeah, it looks like those big American ones that you see. Yeah, like the one yeah. that Beetlejuice. Yes, it's yeah. bigger than it needs to be. But I'm saying you could probably retrofit it or something. Oh, I think I think that bit at the bottom is perfect size for a train to go through. <laughs> not a just train. Need, just not need a to train. The other side. Let's not be. Ooh, a train. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, Ben, just don't do it. You fool. Side and you're fine, Lloyd. Yeah. <laughs> then you've got going both ways. Yeah. At which point it's fine for it. Like go, full, go full London Bridge. Just yeah, put just make all over your a bridge. bridge house. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's the majority of the stuff in here mm -hmm. that I want to have a look at. Like I say, they do have some scenery bits and pieces, including uh, knowingly some of the, the water is currently, oh, where are you? Oh, I never even got to Jungle Warfare. There's some really nice oh, map stuff. Jungle Warfare. Yeah. Um, oh. Don't worry about it. Oh, there it is there. It's water sheets. They have really nice water sheets, but unfortunately they're not currently in stock beyond oh. A4. Um, oh, you paint underneath and then roll that over the top? Yeah, because it goes, they have lake that, and river and or do you, seaside. Do you paint that or roll that out over the top? Is it, oh, it see-through or, or what? It's see-through. Because if, wow. if I go, there's the the river with your, yeah. your waves. Well, and then that, you just trim it to shape for your base. Yeah. Trim it to shape for base or if you're using it to make actual rivers or yeah. waterfronts or whatever. Because mm -hmm. when it's not out of stock... It comes in rolls of up to 21 by 42 inches. Ooh. It's a big what? ass roll. I say. That is a much easier way than having to deal with resin. For <laughs> making rivers and yeah. lakes for your tabletop, it's me as balls. 
Or so, you can maybe actually take this and retrofit what you already have by putting this mm, on top. Yeah. Can't do. What a neat little thing. Mm, I've that, never thought of that one. before. That's really okay. It's, it's uh, one to keep an eye on. Yeah, we need we need to get some of that in for you, Jerry, to do a jerry can. Because I'm uh, very curious to see how that gets applied. Eye. Keeping an eye. At some point, like I say, we may do. Uh obviously if you are aware of world scenics, um that's the sister company. So they have terrain sort of scatter and flock on this this website. But if you're looking for stuff, just go to that one. Um, because it contains so much more, including all the bits and pieces you need if you're ever planning on doing any sort of layouts, including railway layouts. So all the flowers, all the tufts, various lengths from I want to say it's from one mil or maybe two That's mil nifty. up to about mm. twelve to fourteen mil for long grass. Do There's they do trees? So yes, they do. Trees. Well, I got a tree in their logo. You'd like to think they have trees. Oh, I'd hope so. Yeah. I did trees. see trees on the other website. There's a whole tree one of these boxes. Trees. That's, that's not bad for a box of trees. Yeah, but you have to build it. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a lot easier. Than, ooh. That's seafoam based kits. But we're not going to get into that right now. Okay. If you want to Love get into that, stuff. you can go and have a look yourself. The important there, thing is the miniature side. It's the applicators lovely. for the grass, and I'm really interested in because I need one soon. Yeah. Uh, you need a new flock box? Oh, how Lloyd, needed to do it. Lloyd needed to do all the rest of his yeah. uh, yep. his oh. backyard, which he's now paid oh, <laughs> yeah, to go yes. and put the grass back down again. And, uh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure you probably need to camouflage that shed because you don't have planning permission. You don't need planning permission. <laughs> it's not planning joined permission. to my house. But you put a concrete base down, so it's not a temporary structure. Don't need plan permission. This is an XLBS discussion. <laughs> well, I only need plan permission if any part of it touched my actual house. Ah, okay. Fair. Otherwise, it's just a shed. And on that note, okay. that's your indie of the week. <laughs> World War Gaming. And uh, yes, they do do the massive static grass applicators, including two sides of hoppers. Oh. So if you're looking to do a massive layout, like a train layout or like a full board, um, then they do that. They are on the pricier side of those. Um, so you, you know, but they, unlike some of the knockoffs that are made with fly swaps and stuff like that, at least, you know, these ones will work out of the box and you've got somebody you can go back to if you run into issues. Sounds good. So, you know, once again, what you get a what neat you pay little for. set of stuff. Yeah. Mm. Right. Enough of that. Let's take a look at what's up in the news. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh you love. It's the Muck News. <laughs> all right, we are back for the news, mm -hmm. and we're going to be kicking things off with some War Cradle Dystopian Wars news. Yes. Uh, so the uh, the pre-orders and the well the previews for September's releases have been announced by the folks at War Cradle for Dystopian Wars. Uh, there's going to be two big new battle fleets for you to dive into and have some fun with for both the Sultanate and those who want to head up north and hang out with the Scandinavians and the Scandinavians. Yay, more both portals. People, right? Yeah. So the first of these is the Abydos Battle Fleet set, which comes with the Abydos that you see in the center, the lovely big new resin piece, which is a very nice addition to the uh, fleet there. Uh, it comes with all sorts of guns attached to it in many different ways and can also be used to fix up things and everything as well, which is always quite nice to see. Um, I always love the little tiny little plug and play guns that you see on the front of the ships i think it's such a nice little kind of micro machines thing <laughs> from like turrets and rockets yes <laughs> so is, cool. it, is it commanded by dr daniel jackson <laughs> maybe, maybe. yeah uh so the abidos that you see there can also be built as the tanis or the pharos depending on which you want to go for and obviously you've got those nice um portals for ships to vanish through which is quite nice uh and in addition to that there's also a whole bunch of other ships to sort of get you uh going with the Sultanate, so you've got the Manjets, which can also be built as the Saba, the Sobek, and the Mesektet, if you prefer. And sure. then there's also the Hassin, Hassassins, which can be built as Kopeshes, which is quite a nice one as well. And then there's also the little tiny scarabs zipping away across the water. Zoom, zoom. So yeah, a very nice little set there that combines both plastic and resin bits and pieces, and a good upgrade for everybody who's diving into play as a sultanate i know a lot of people would be very interested in the abidos one um uh, obviously the nordic stuff is very cool but i know a lot of folks were really enjoying the sort of weird magical 
tech side of things that you kind of get with these, which is really nice to see. Oh, all the uh, rocket yeah. pods. All the rocket pods are killing everybody around you. It's like Definitely. a floating fortress, which is always good. So yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. Could be better. It's <laughs> been lined well, with torpedoes. Yeah, torpedoes <laughs> everywhere. Uh, following on from that, there's also a second battle fleet set that is for um, the Scions of Jutland, Ooh, and I this like one. These. Oh, I am forever in love with the massive robots that you get in the uh, in Dystopian Wars. They are the best. The boats are nice, but the big mechs, the Colossus, is are the way to go. It looks like a dwarf. Yes. <laughs> my, my only problem is no this must appears to have submarines to give Jerry even more torpedoes. Yeah, Cancel it now. We can't have things that look like dwarves. <laughs> uh, so this comes at the heart of this is the Valhalla Fast Dreadnought, which can also be built as the SMS Skjalden or the Asgard class dreadnought, if you prefer. You also get a whole whopping host of Ooh, additional pits and spoiler. pieces. Yeah. <laughs> it, makes, it makes it go faster. Yeah. So is that, or it can yeah. be used like a shopping cart. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The, the engine they breaks down. He just grabs it. behind it and push. Yeah. If you put a euro in the back, ankles. yeah, that's how you get out of port. You put a euro in the back and it'll pop it. <laughs> out, right? yeah. uh, so you also got the Thor Assault Raiders, which could be built as the Loki, Angerboda, uh, Heimdall, Balder, or the Hefjon. You also got the Odin Reavers, which could be built as the Jotun or the Gungnir. Gungnir? Oh, I love that. So good. Odin Spear. Uh, and then there's also, a, it's almost as if they've just plumbed the depths of Norse mythology for these. Uh, you've also got the Fenrir Hunter submarines, the Valkyrie Hunt rotors, yeah, you've got nice. escort tokens, Vali tokens, just the Hoth heavy corvettes as well. And then That's capping things hot. off, the best, the Einhia Vitruvian Colossus. So they're the big, chunky plastic kits with the resin upgrades, as you can mm. see there. As I said in the article for these, I love that in this sort of future past where everything is upgraded with mighty technology, there is still space for an axe. An axe will still do the business. It's not quite a boat sword, but it's still cool. I just want them to walk <laughs> over and just grab a boat and just push it down till the bubbles stop. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even need to hit them with an axe, just burn them. <laughs> oh, just, you know, just body slam it. <laughs> uh, Off but the yeah. top rope with the people's elbow. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. talking of that, wait until you see the third of the set oh, available, have. which is the Union Vanguard Squadron. This oh. comes with a couple of Colossus who are coming off the top ropes, <laughs> which I think is very nice. So yeah, as you can see, they've got the Rustling. rotors on the back to get them lifted up, and they are just bringing the hammer down, ready to smash everything in their way. So something very nice for the Union there to play around with. I mean, they're just jumping in, screaming, I heard y'all need some freedom. Exactly. So leading the way are the John Henry Vitruvian Colossuses, Colossi, that's the way uh, sure. to describe these. Uh, leading the way, they've even got like, oh, I love the underslung guns on their wrists as well. Mm. I think I would love to, someone's probably done this already, but I would love to see just a big robot battle in dystopian wars where everyone just takes big chunky uh like colossi yes <laughs> just to beat each other up rock and sock in robots but dystopian was themed uh i think, also... I, think I think though if i was gonna get those i would change how they're supported what would you, what, i think what? i'd custom model a big splashy wave like they've just jumped right. out of the sea oh yeah and, and yeah, attach them to that um, so yeah, so you've got the John Henry Vitruvian Colossi there, you've got the Arc Akron, sorry, Akron Sentry Rotors, the Cheyenne Hunter Submarine, the Union Farpoint Sentry Platforms for plopping down to defend yourself, and then you've got the Talon SRS tokens and the Valiant Fast Destroyers as well. Looking very nice. The, the oh, subs like are those. subs are they're cool looking, but it kind of confuses me that they still have the big paddle wheels built in. I love that. I don't That's... think that works underwater. Why wouldn't it? <sighs> yeah, it'll, it'll work. Well. Yeah. All right, it'll it's work. Technology, man. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. It's the same as a propeller screw. You know, you I think those are really you cool. You just need to push water past. It, it's yeah. the fact that you could pop them out and put wheels on them and turn them into drag racers for games <laughs> is just a bonus. They're the car from uh, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen in the film, which no one should ever mention ever oh, again. Never, oh, never mention that. So. I do like the. I don't know if it's a turret on their heads. <laughs> But it's like a little tiny cappy, but made out of I, I, Yes. <laughs> I, I, it is a turret, but I love that it looks like a little it, it, union it, cap. It's it, is cool. a, it is a pew-pew cappy. Pew, pew yeah. Um, so, yeah. 
three sets there for you to go and have a look at uh, coming out towards the end of September. So watch out for those. Great ways for you to build on your Dystopian Wars collection or maybe even get yourself started with one. Very nice stuff there. Indeed. Very fancy. Mm -hmm. Speaking of starting new armies. Oh, yes. And sticking with Scandiwija. More stuff for Team Yankee on the way. Yeah, so uh, this weekend sees the release of a whole bunch of extra stuff for those people who want to be playing as the Swedish. Um, So leading the way is the Swedish starter force for the S-Tank Company, if you want to tinker around with that and use it to get you going in the game, which is very, very good. Shockingly, the prize for this week as well. It is also the prize. It's almost as if we knew what we were doing. We don't (laughs) tend to, but we do now. So, yeah. Uh, So this comes... So this comes with a whole host of different bits and pieces for you to get started. You get eight of the S tanks in the set, so plenty of those, although some people would say not enough. You also get three Fleur de Gefleur RBS Jeeps, because I don't know how to pronounce that. There we go. (laughs) There's also two uh, of the HKP-9 helicopters sweeping Mm -hmm. in and giving you some air support. Um, Because... (laughs) (laughs) Good morning! Good morning! That's what happens when the transport gets there and they unleash their deadliest weapon. Yeah. Okay, just checking. Yeah. Um, it'll, of course, this is a sort of starter force, so you get some extra bits and pieces in there. So you're going to get an A5 rulebook, you get a starting booklet as well, and you get all the unit cards that you need for playing with this particular set on the tabletop, which I think is really nice. Uh, and these these packs that um, the folks at Battlefront do are really good for people to dive in and have some fun with and uh, get yourself started in a game, mm-hmm. especially with how easy it is to start playing these, uh, both Flames of War and Team Yankee nowadays. Yeah. So. I mean, John is currently working through a 100-point list build nice. for the speeds, so Ooh. stay tuned and keep an eye out for that. Intriguing. Very cool. Maybe yeah. he'll do it all in the Swedish camo, like he did in the <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> do you want him to die? Yes. <laughs> it's uh, for me, John. Dance. In addition uh, to the uh, Swedish starter force, there we've also got a bunch of extra stuff. So if you didn't have enough S tanks, you can also get yourself Thanks. more S tanks to throw into the, the mix. I like the the low profile of them is such a like sneaky little thing. Mm. I love it. Kind of like that. Oh yes, we built modern tanks, but you can't see us. <laughs> what <laughs> was the, the white? Same. What was the white picket fence on the front for? Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> that. It's yeah. so that people don't stand on your grass. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's the ultimate get off my lawn. Maybe it's for it's, attaching camo net or something. It. I don't know. Yeah. Catching um, bushes and that sort of thing. Because you've got such yeah. a low profile, the drivers or commander have very little view. So you nah. don't want to be um, ending up with oh. a load of shrubbery on top of your tank. John was going to be in the show, and he was going to tell us exactly what all of this meant, but we're going to make it up as we go along. Yeah. <laughs> it is a fence for holding the enemy away. <laughs> so. that too. I assume it is yeah. some form of shrapnel shield. Maybe, yeah. Probably. Uh, we also have a second tank platoon for you to go and have a look at. So this one's the Centurion one. Uh, so this one can be used by the Swedish and the Danish, if you prefer. Uh, but it's a nice little option for you to throw into the mix. There were a couple of different tweaks and upgrades that the mm. Swedes made to the Centurion, so you'd have a slightly different tank from some of the others out there at the time, but uh, still a proper little workhorse to throw into the mix for you to use in your games of Team Yankee. You've then got the PBV 302 platoon, so you've got yourself some nice uh, transport options there, which mm. is always good to see. Something to rush across the... Uh, Especially when you've got infantry at Google everywhere. Yes, exactly, which we will see soon as well. Mm-hmm. We've then got the, and I'm going to do the designations, oh, yeah. PVPJTGB1111 platoon. I'm just going to say, <laughs> platoon. there we go. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> honestly, uh, I'm, I'm looking at that like ro- large rocket launcher. And I'm just wondering, okay, so you've got that one. Do you then flip it for the reload? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I mean, does the driver have to duck and it's just like, okay, swing it around, ready? Well, I, interestingly, reading a little bit more about these on the Battlefront side, because they had looked so sporty, the drivers would just floor it, but that meant that they would tip over quite a lot. And so nice. they had to put in warnings for like, just don't go too fast when you're going I mean, around corners. Ha- have, <laughs> you, have you never seen a scorpion fire sideways? I have not, no. It is a small recon vehicle with a 90 millimeter gun on it, it turns to the side, it shoots, and it goes, whoosh. <laughs> it literally pops up. Wow. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then to cap things off for this, we have 
the the infantry that you're always going to be needing to try and hold all sorts of objectives on the tabletop. Mm. So you've got an armoured rifle platoon there, which comes with a whole host of special weapons alongside just the basic rifle teams there. So you've got uh, anti-tank teams, you've got your missile teams and your MGs as well. So nice ways to hold and the down. Guy the on the left, the guy on the left is named Bill. <laughs> yes, this is Bill's missile team. <laughs> is missile team Bill ready to fire? Um, so all of these you'll be able to bring to the tabletop uh, with the uh, unit cards pack as well. So if you just want to maybe just sit down on the floor on a Sunday afternoon, spread all the cards out in front of you, and and just like John does every weekend, try and theory craft lots and lots of lists that use lots and lots of different tanks, then you've got some options to do so there with that. That's definitely what John does every week. Or just yeah. throw them all across your bed and roll around in the speedy, speedy goodness. Exactly. And dream of the Swedish chef. Please don't do that. So yeah, <laughs> that's a horrible idea. <laughs> oh, God. so yeah, uh, all that's available this weekend for you to go and pick up. And there's going to be even more releases for Nordic forces moving into September. So we'll come back and talk about them when they start mm. to arrive. So yeah, very nice. Sweet. Stuff. Does anybody know? Do they? Do they just? You just field it as their own army because they're not in NATO. Yeah. Well, the, you can field them with other NATO forces, yeah, and they can run on their support. own. Either yeah, or. okay. Either or both. So both it's options work. Both is good. Just bear in mind, it's all different. All different in the past that wasn't the past. It's a cold war gone hot. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? But it could possibly be hot. close to our future. Yeah. Let's not dream that into reality. <laughs> all right. Uh, taking a look at a completely different fantasy then. Yes. Uh, Mounted <laughs> Games have been taking a look at the Twiglets. They have. Um, which yeah. is exciting times ahead for me. I got the other day. Aren't I the most important one? Mm. Um, so are these racist what... elves or the extra racist elves? Oh, no, these are just the people. most evil of elves. Yeah. Uh, so the... Lied to me. There's no twiglets here. Yeah, they are. <laughs> There's they are. That's that's what you're looking oh at. Oh my god, that horse. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, it's that's... not a horse. Don't worry, it's got six limbs. It's oh, horrifying. Not four. Um so the Twilight Kin, the um Elf adjacent race these days. I'm going to say um, they found a space to live in the same realm that the Night Stalkers uh, live in. Um, so for a while they've not been available for Kings of War, and then the army list itself disappeared from the Mantic Companion and from the website because they've been doing a complete uh, revisit of what the the Twiglets will be for Panathor and for Kings of War themselves, uh, and we've got the first sort of glimpse in the Dungeon Saga Origin um, Kickstarter of the the new concepts, which was this nightmarish blend of elf and thing. Um, they've sort of layered more on top of that since then. Um, so oh. this is one of the Dungeon Saga Origin um, Impalers or one of the one of the big bosses. He's a big, big meaty looking thing. And the idea is that even though they uh, live within this void with the, the Night Stalkers. They're not subservient to, they don't share the space. Uh, they find a way to just just take over. They subordinate the Night Stalkers, bend them to their will. Uh, they belong to us now. And uh, they sail through the void, occasionally creeping back out into this reality uh, to lamp anybody around them. Um, there are a few hints that uh, Night Stalkers, or sorry, Night Stalkers, Twiglets, Twilight Kim will be coming in a two-player starter set uh, later on in the year against Abyssal Dwarves. There have been a few stories for Armada and a few other things uh, that have hinted at a, a growing sort of uh, upsetness between the Abyssal Dwarves and the uh, Twilight Kin themselves. So I imagine this is going to be the new starter set. That's going to be uh, the with, cover image for with, it, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> dwarves? Did nobody <laughs> tell me that dwarves coming. have been cancelled? Uh, no, nope, no. Nope. Well, well, Ronnie see, still draws breath. They would. <laughs> here, here's the thing, though. They're only fighting because I guarantee you one of the Twiglets insulted their hat. Probably. Yeah, it's entirely possible. Um, some of the most interesting things for me, obviously, there's a campaign coming uh, next month. So throughout September there'll be a worldwide campaign uh, based around the Northern Alliance and the Night Stalkers uh, and I think some of that will tie in or will definitely tie into the Twilight Kin sort of being resurrected come October um, and amongst nice. the videos that they've done uh, Kyle started doing bits and pieces talking about them uh, they showed oh, off some cool. of the renders for the uh, oh, Impalers themselves very now, nice they've decided to go for a different sort of feel so the 
imperialist, the, shields, the, the male side of the Twilight Kin mm -hmm. get completely corrupted and deformed. So these will be large infantry, which for oh. uh, Kings of War means there'll be 40 mil square bases. These are sort of ogre sized or bigger. Wow. Uh, so they've got this creepily mutated uh, feel where they've given in to the corruption of the void and this will be one of the, the multi-part plastic sets oh, it's so much. with the big big so tower the shields everywhere. and the is, strange body horror uh, is that his pants that have been stitched or his legs that have been stitched it could be either and it's entirely <laughs> I, I think that is the skin of his victims Definitely he took the, their leather flesh to make a very oh my god pants. that hand would be so annoying just in face, can't yeah. see stuff. Get out of my way. Not don't touching worry. can't get mad. Not don't touching worry. He's can't got get no mad. eyes anymore. Uh, so he doesn't have to worry about that. You don't need eyes to see. And there's, yeah. there's oh, a couple more coming around the head as well. All through that shield as well. I yeah. think the... I I have always... I think I've said this before. Like I've always been on the fringe of Kings of War. Hmm. And I did dabble with the idea of doing like an ogre army and things. But I think doing something focused around the Twilight Kin would be very nice. Especially oh, gotcha. with these new models. Oh yeah, they, these look like they're going to paint up a treat for like a yeah. nice dark, gothy, bloody sort of style on them. Oh, I'm, mm. I'm going to go very poppy colours. Oh want, really? You're I'm, going super oh, bright highlighty? I, I want people to see them coming. Uh, they've got obviously Night Stalker bits in there, so the Banshees, mm -hmm. um, that their skirts are all constructed from you know, yeah, Banshee the, models. Yeah, the capelets uh, are wings. There is also a picture in here, I think, of Mikael. There he is. Hello, Mikkel, you lovely man, you. Uh, he hasn't been around since first edition, where he was the world's greatest filth. Uh, he was practically unkillable in game and would just destroy a unit a turn. Uh, and eventually, they just went, you know what? We're just gonna, we're not gonna release him anymore. Uh, was so he I'm like the him back? Was was he like their analog originally for like Malekith? Yeah. Yeah, 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 very much so. And again, mounted on one of those hexapedal. Um, that's so cool. Night Stalker mounts that the Soul Reavers uh, float around mm. the place on. Not Soul Reavers, because that's. Yeah, I, I, I am not feeding that thing an apple. It'll take your hand with it. Uh, What's the monster above that as well? The I think that was in the preview thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Is, yeah. Um, oh, baby oh, Jesus. Oh, it's, it's another creepy, I can't remember the name of it. Is it oh, Boy Dragon. Dragon. They, they were initially released as Armada as one of the Night Stalker flyers for the Night Stalker. Oh, yeah. For the Twilight Kid fleet, sorry. Huh. So, so they're another creepy realm based thing um mm. but yeah interesting to see the the idea that they're going with where the um the male elves are more deeply corrupted than the female elves so you actually have two different sized um figures within yeah the, ju just within the actual race itself now you've got very cool mutated ogre like uh men and then the I, uh the, the less was... corrupted destroyed women I think it was in one of the Dungeon Saga Origins art pieces. Was it the cover for maybe the one that they were doing for the Twilight King where you had the sitting queen the sitting on the throne yeah. and then the huge dudes behind her sort of like leering over? Oh, yeah. Cool. And there have been a few yeah. stories popping up here, there, and everywhere. Um, I see your face, Lloyd. Where the. Uh, it's not what? that. It's not that, thing. It's not that meme. It's not I that meme. I didn't think nothing. I didn't say nothing. Um, it's all right, sorry. Lloyd. You're living inside his head rent free. <laughs> But yeah, the uh, there've been some uh, elven characters that've been corrupted in the the story and in various games, and and they've started off as as uh, essentially good heroes, and now mm -hmm. they've ended up cropping up as um, Twilight kin aligned evil in some of the uh, things like League of Infamy and, and Dungeon Saga Origins. So it's nice that they're expanding the the backstory and the lore as well. Yeah, definitely. So uh, really, really keen to see where they go with the. Uh, the campaign in September. What, I've just got to get my Night Stalkers and yeah. the lines finished. What's really nice about what's happening with Mantic at the moment is I think I feel, I feel like they've found their feet again. Mm. Like we're actually seeing lots of things, lots of updates for all of their games coming out. There's we're getting stuff every month coming out for the different factions and things, putting out stuff for like smaller games like Armada and bigger ones like Firefight and Warpath and, and stuff mm. like that. So. Yeah, hopefully the same goes for Kings of War and we start to see, uh, well, obviously these coming out soon and then maybe re revamps of some of the other factions as well later down the line. Be nice yeah, to see. Well, Those yeah. elves are still quite old. <laughs> I don't know if the uh, elves will get done soon. Oh, you never know. The elves I mean, need to be put in a bin. Never the elves are I love the elves. No, they're not. Well, they're again, terrible. here's the thing. If the mold still works, Ronnie's still going to run it. The mold never worked. That's going to be my argument. 
They are like they are they are look they're quite like quite a lot like twiglets. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'd be more like twiglets. Just painted them brown and salted them. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Why does yeah. an elf have to be tall? They're not in Dungeons and Dragons. It doesn't have to be tall. Elves it just has to be nice looking. If nimble, <laughs> I, I it's, like not that, it's not that they're short. They're just they shite looking. That's uh, that's all the different. Th- then, I don't know then, if we bleep that or not, but, but that's, they no, are. I don't know. Don't bother with that. <laughs> but then that's all subjective. You know, there's plenty of things that people like that I would go well. You know, I don't like the look of that for X, Y, and Z mm. reasons. So let us know in the comments below if the elves are good or if they're not. Ooh, I'd like them to see see them do some more stuff with the salamanders and things and expand that in different ways. That'd be really nice. Yeah. But anyway, that's just me. That's not the realm's possibility. Yeah. And what's your favorite what's your favorite Kings of War faction? Let us know that down below as well. Yes. Probably the yeah. Probably the I thank God for that. You're not asking me. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna ask. We don't win hard of all day for you to sit and think about it. We're, we're, Jerry, it's well, easier for you to though. tell us the ones you don't like than the ones you Dry do like. Dead. <laughs> there you go we're done everything else is good granddad no it's the only one I don't collect and I never will collect I hate you them. collected the elves yes you weirdo hey, Jerry <laughs> guess what you're getting for Christmas baby well we're dry and dead anyway we're dry elves <laughs> right apart from that yeah. um, another company that's good at looking after the community that's yes. good yeah, so Bad Scooter Games, Annie, uh, they've been around for a very long time now. They've been doing those amazing female miniatures for use in your various games, whatever you whatever you want to play. They've done historical, they've done sci-fi, they've done post-apocalyptic and everything else in between. Uh, but they run a really fun uh, little project uh, called the Community Miniatures Project. Who would have thought it? Uh, and with this, you get to join the little community and sort of help people uh, well, donate a little bit of money and all that kind of thing, and then help work together as a collective to choose the characters that you're going to bring to life, help in the design process, and then obviously see them made into reality at the very end of it, which I think is a really cool idea. Uh, This has been sort of going for a little while, and the first sort of crop of these have been available for you to go and pick up. So you'll be able to get your hands on the likes of Black Agnes, Ching Shi, Empress Zenobia, Harriet Tubman, that's such a cool one. I love the idea of that and playing a really interesting scenario around her and trying to get, you know, get the slaves out of their um their particular predicaments mm. on the Underground Railway and stuff. You've also got Julie de Aubigny, Eleanor of Aquitaine. I'm getting all these right. Mm. And then they're also doing a whole section of additional ones coming out towards the end of the year. Uh, around sort of December time, that will include the likes of Joan of Arc and all that kind of thing. Uh, I was following Annie on uh, on Twitter, and I think she's been watching the Mila Jovovich uh, movie, which I yes. think is very cool. Uh, and uh, I, I think Complete the miniatures probably yes, and I think the miniatures probably going to be based around her, which would be yeah. very nice to see. Um, but yeah, one of the nice things about this, obviously, you can get involved and sort of help the process of bringing these to life. It's something that we've seen a lot of other companies do something similar to this like i know that firelock do their firestarter mm. thing where you can help to bring a particular project to life by pledging for it to happen whereas this is a little bit more involved where you sort of get to sit down yep. with the designers and all that kind of thing and help annie with what they want to do um but this is really nice and obviously it's kind of building on what they've been doing for the past have many years bringing interesting and diverse and fascinating characters from history uh women and stuff like that to the tabletop to play in your games which is nice ridiculous so, paint i don't know if it's my favorite sculpt it's a nice sculpt but the painting on the, the paint job yeah. the fluffy the butterflies all over it yeah. ridiculous she was like a, a badass pirate and she's amazing she had like a, a wicked fleet and all sorts of different things that's another thing about this if you go into the um the different entries over on the web store mm. you can learn a little bit about the different characters and then you can go over to like a uh, sort of a deep dive from annie where she's talked about sort of like the history behind them and using the particular mm. inspiration and why they've got certain accessories and all that kind of thing with them as well so it's a really nice little project for people who want to kind of get involved in the process of making miniatures learn a little bit about history and uh yeah bring some more awesome characters to the tabletop um for uh, for use in your games yeah sweet. very nice sweet cool. sweet like candy Yes, I quite like Eleanor of Aquity in there as well yes. with her um, her bird. Mm-hmm. Yes, very nice. And you can paint her up like the crow. <laughs> you, you could. <laughs> yeah, is that the way she's got it? No. Right. Moving on from okay, that, if you must, uh, we also have a fantasy war game that potentially mm. has sort of gone under the radar for a, a few people. Mm. Uh, So, you know, Modiphius, they tend to sort of release a whole range of sort of quirky and different things and and all that kind of stuff. Well, one of these uh, that I've seen sort of popping up every so often uh, over the last month or so is called Mythic Commander. So Mythic Commander 
is a sort of all-in-one little rule, rule uh, war game that comes in one book uh, where it's designed for two players uh, and you basically dive in and it's been designed to be quick and easy to play and good for pickup and play as well on the tabletop. The other thing that's really nice about it is that it's kind of, I mean, not really, but kind of is travel size which i think is nice because it uses all the different tokens that you see there rather than having to use miniatures you can use miniatures if you want but the whole pro the whole sort of process behind this is that you're sort of bringing it to the table very very quickly and easily and just using the chits to move around so it's like a traditional kind of board game war game that a lot of people will know from the past which i think is quite nice the set comes with everything you need to play if you buy it physically so you get seven different factions spread over across six civilizations you get all the tokens for the different armies you get a double-sided map to play your games on and it just seems like a really nice alternative to playing with uh with miniatures which i think is really cool that's not a uh, double-sided map so that mat that you see there is double sided, and it's like a little paper mat kind of thing. Flip so, yeah. over, there'll be yeah. more on the other side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's double sided. Yeah, and the, and, and the tokens are in the rule book, and you cut them out, or what? Well, you get everything in the set, so you get the I'm book, and then you get all the cardboard punched out. Yeah, so you get all the different cardboard punch out. out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and then you get the card packs. So you've got cards that is that are designed for commanding your units on the tabletop, and then you also get cards that represent spells and magical abilities and all that kind of thing at the same time. Uh, and it just seems like a fun little thing that maybe a few people might want to go and check out and see what you think of it, especially if you're like, ooh, I like the idea of playing something fantasy and mass battle, but I don't, don't particularly want to paint up large amounts of uh, miniatures. Fools. Let me go and check something like and, this. And the movement's so, square-driven. Yeah, so it's got little squares on the thing that you move around on, which is quite nice. I've Jerry, not looked too yeah. deep into it rules-wise, but it seems like it's quite a fun one to, mm. to try out. Oh, look, so. Jerry, you know what you need to do if you ever get this? Off to Peter's Paper Boys. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I suppose you could do, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you want to upgrade it from the, yeah. the cardboard chips. Yeah, I will also say there is also a digital version of this. So if you don't want to get the physical pack, you can just buy like a digital version, which is just you print everything out. And, mm. and do it that way which is quite nice um, but yeah seems like a fun one that I think is well worth having a look at if you're uh, thinking about fantasy war games but have not really necessarily dived in uh, and obviously the, the rules that you see here don't necessarily have to just be used for the tokens and stuff that we saw you could use miniatures with this if you preferred and take it in that direction so yeah I'm curious as to the seven um, factions that mm-hmm. are in there because there's quite clearly some sort of mouse looking thing there yes oh yeah my soldiers <laughs> yeah does it list what factions they are it doesn't no. no but i'm assuming because it says there's seven factions across six civilizations so i'd assume there's like two human ones maybe and then like a bunch of other sort of standard fancy races potentially in there as well um uh, but yeah um dum, 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 dum. nice little question see, and yeah. it's actually i mean it's pretty cheap as well i mean yeah so, yeah 16 pounds <laughs> oh 16 quid for the lot oh. yeah yeah not bad mm-hmm. oh jesus yeah, so I had to uh, break into the page source to get my <laughs> to get the images. What are they? <laughs> They're nice. He, he had to do a techie if techie you're thing. Undead stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's undead. Okay. Yeah, what and knights and whites and things, and then you got your like orcs and stuff and things. Mm. Yeah. What scale are we talking? If you wanted to make something, would it be six mil? Uh, it says you can have base. It's all based on. It's all based bases. on frontages and bases, yeah. and it says you can go up to forty. Print. You can go up to forty mil in terms of size of base. Oh, yeah. so I can ten, stick ten whatever I want on as long as it fits. Mm. Yeah, so you can put whatever thing on it as long as the the bases are the right size. So yeah, it's a great right. one for those people who want to tinker around with small scale stuff, especially if you're looking at some of the things we looked at last week from Micro World potentially. So yeah, mm. very nice, fascinating stuff. I'll be fast. I'll be interested to see how it plays out. Yeah, um, yeah. there's some yeah. interesting games out there that are a combination of card and. Mm. Uh, miniature so i wonder how integral that is to the mm. uh the overall yeah. playthrough see as i say it seems like one that's kind of flew into the radar a little bit so mm. maybe worth having a look at maybe i'm completely wrong and i've just not had my finger on the pulse but if you have played it and you want to tell me what it's all about drop it off in the comments below and yeah, uh, yeah i'll have a look cool. so, speak yeah. to the beat mm. some more news yes one more Taking with fantasy it's on here with a thin <laughs> so called gam uh, yes. Yams Workship, yes. Um, so uh, we've been uh, not necessarily talking about them for the uh, last couple of weeks because there's been nothing to talk about. But uh, this weekend the sees the pre-orders of the starter set. Well, it's not starter set. The starter army. <laughs> for those uh, people, a, just a launch box? A launch box, yes. Or an army set, as they launch refer to it now, I think, actually. Yeah. yeah. So um, this is for the Cities of Sigma. Love them or hate them. Uh, you get your hands on a bunch of the new models. 
the new plastics. So you get the free guild marshal and the attendant with the head in a box, which is always nice to see. And the attendant can be built in a variety of different ways, depending on how you want to do it. You can go uh, male or female, or you could switch out the different weapons and head options and things like that, which is good. Uh, you've also then got the Alchemite Warforger, which is their new take on a metal wizard, I suppose, for uh, the Mortal Realms. You've then got 10 Steel Helms and uh, five of the Cavaliers. So yeah, lots of things to dive into and have fun with there. Actually, I think it's two sets of 10 Steel Helms. That's what it is. And then you get the Cavaliers on the side. So you've got lots of different options in terms of infantry and things. There's a uh, a battle report for the Cities of Sigmar on Warhammer Plus this week. So if you're interested in seeing how they play, there's a nice one to go and check out. If you're someone who plays 40k and you like the Astra Militarum and the Cadians and stuff, you're very much like the way that the Sigma play because there's lots of orders that you can give and sort of sneaky things you can sort of send out and messages between different units and stuff. So there's lots of combination play for them, which is always nice to see on the tabletop. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be available alongside the uh brand spanking new limited edition cities of sigma book uh which comes with that lovely new cover and the little tiny ribbon and stuff in it and you can also get yourself all of the unit cards and war scrolls and things you need to play with them alongside transfers and things which is always nice so if you want to pledge your allegiance to a particular city you can do which is always good to see um obviously when it comes to these launch boxes a lot of the stuff that's inside these will eventually be out later, so you don't necessarily have to feel like you have to pick it up now. But if you are eager to get in, get stuck in with the Cities of Sigmar, then obviously this weekend is the great time to do that. Um, the only things you're probably not going to get, get your hands on are the fancy smancy book, but everything else will be available later on down the line. I do so. feel like they're getting lazier with the um, limited edition books. <laughs> well, having yeah. all like full wraparound cover artwork and stuff. and, and then So having like, the different we've, cities. The end, yeah, so, we've added yeah. a ribbon. <laughs> so you can tell the difference between this and the regular one. It's yeah. got a ribbon. Got a ribbon. You can make uh, a page. If you don't want to play as the Cities of Sigma, uh, then there is also another Vanguard set that's going to be available this week. So if you like your sneaky Seraphon, uh, then you'll be able to get your hands on this one. Don't think so there's anything the sneaky about them. Yet. Well, that's true. Yeah, they're a bit big and brutish for that, mm. I suppose. Um, so uh, this is essentially the equivalent for a combat patrol in 40k at the moment, uh, although of course these aren't necessarily as balanced as a combat patrol is in 40k. These ones just kind of like an entry level product for those people diving into Age of Sigma. Uh, but this comes with the Saurus Old Blood on the Carnosaur, as you can see at the back there, uh, alongside the new models. So you've got the Croxigors ready to smash you into pieces. And then you've also got the Saurus Warriors at the front there as well. So you've got mm -hmm. the new look ones for those. And you can build them and paint them as either the coalesced or the slightly celestial ones, depending on how you want to go about it. So make them all proper starborn lizards or maybe something a little bit more physical. And add in warrior. your very own Swedish chef. <laughs> I mean, that's I'm, I'm sorry, Jerry, that's seen. just the absolute ultimate warrior. Well, I like to think that that's actually a chef from the Cities of Sigmar chasing down a nasty orc in <laughs> the badlands of the mortal realms. So Clear your bills, folks. <laughs> it's yeah. it's not a million miles away from some of them, to be fair. Yeah, it? that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very cool. <laughs> Considering what they're armed with. There we have so, it. Yeah. Should be All up for pre-order. <laughs> All up for pre-order this ah, weekend. Yeah. Swing! 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 <laughs> Buy merch. Yeah. There is no merch. You can't buy any. Yeah. Right. That's enough of the news. Uh, we shall return in just one moment to wrap up the show uh, mm -hmm. with some 3D printing and Kickstarter campaigns. <laughs> All right, we are back in time to take a look at some 3D printing, mm -hmm. which is, yes. I believe, the shit. <laughs> what the just just a little bit. <laughs> that uh, so it's yeah. just Loki the shit. Yeah. Uh, so this week, I thought I'd go off on an entirely different tangent. Yes. Uh, I thought I'd dive into one that uh, seemed like it was pretty new on the block. Um, although, again, maybe I've just not been keeping my finger on the 3D printed pulse. Uh, that's what they tell me anyway. But anyway, so yes, we're diving into looking at Vault Z miniatures. Uh, there's another Z on the end of there, because of course there is. And this is, if you hadn't guessed it, about zombies. Okay. So this is a huge collection of awesome 3D printable sculpts that you can pick up to do with your zombie games. As you will have read in the description there at the top as well, this guy really loves his zombies. And so that's where this has come from. There is a whole host of the ones for you to pick from, from big beasties and aberrations through to regular old zombies, 
stumbling around the tabletop and then you've also got a huge variety of survivors oh, as well to play with spider yeah. creepy there are Try so many spider there are so many games where you need to dive in and need to be like right i need to have a big massive boss to throw into the the end of an encounter or something like that and i think this kind of solidifies it in a very nice way and there's a whole host of very strange ones all of these leave my skin crawling yeah Man, nice. bat, zombie. <laughs> so, yeah, very cool. We're Crushing a car as well. Yeah. yeah. I wonder what size car that is. Because, <laughs> I mean, uh, that could be a substantial bit of kit for your tabletop. It, if that's yeah, just yeah I mean, it looks like an SUV to me. Mm. But it could be a smart car. <laughs> <laughs> In which case, it's not quite as impressive. But the driver wasn't very smart, that's for sure. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, some big, chunky ones for you to play around with. Really what nice. the... It's the Rotten Knight. Okay. It's got a touch of the uh, Cossack. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, he is love squatting. Mm. The thing that I really, I, the thing that I like about a lot of these, especially with the ones that they've done with the slightly quirky sort of stories and stuff behind mm. them, is that you could create some really interesting uh, scenarios for some games that you maybe play quite a lot of and sort of m- tweak them to sort of fit a particular season or time of year and things like that so like a lot of these are really nice and they've got that proper like uh sort of heroic proportion to them a little bit comic booky in some de- to some degree and so i think these would be great for kind of tweaking and homebrewing stuff Look, for games like zombie side i think gas powered really nice. ice cream oh. van yeah 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 Prepping you know ready to go. Your zombie battle wagon. Exactly. Yeah. They love like, exactly like. Oh, I love that. The one yeah. pushing up through the bag. Yeah. That's cool. That's really nicely done. That is a why, good way to stop zombies. Why does back. only one have a zipper, though? Maybe, Maybe the zips are on the other side. Yeah. Or, or the they bottom. could be sheets on a mortuary table, uh, depending yeah, on what you true. want to do with your life. That's so good. Oh, you really need nice. a zombie spawn point? Spawn there point, yeah. Go. Yeah, mm-hmm. or just an objective marker. Mm-hmm. Oh, nobody, nobody's obje- going to run towards the zombies, are they? <laughs> yeah, yeah right. but you have to run towards it to close the lid so they don't come out. That's true. Yeah, then you can be the one to do that, Justin. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of yeah I, I, cars and buses on top of them. Yeah. yeah. Here's the funny thing, Ben. I don't have to be fast; just faster than Warren, and I am faster than Warren. That's that's true. Yeah, it's very harsh, but incredibly uh, but- fair. Yes. I don't think you want to lock them in the sewer system. I'm pretty sure a zombie could still come up your toilet bowl. <laughs> they never just get this, past the U-bend. Just this, this hand, this disembodied hand coming up. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be protected by the U-bend. Mm. Yeah, give you a little tickle. You hope uh, you're protected. Yeah. Oh, I like the option, helmeted or not. Mm-hmm. Zombie snakes would definitely get down to the U-bend, though. Oh, so zombie, oh, yeah. rats. zombie snakes. I, no, I don't think I've ever seen a zombie snake. Mm-hmm. Oh, you need to go out more. Oh, that's going to be the follow-up to Snakes on a Plane. It will be <laughs> Dead Snakes on a Plane. Well, I know they've <laughs> done, like, Zombievers. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 What's, what's nice about this as well is that, like, there's some quirky and interesting creations that have sort of come out of different uh, ideas and things that they've had. But then there are also quite a few zombies and characters in here that would be tied into popular culture and sort of mm-hmm. characters that you'll know. So if you play a lot of video games like The Walking Dead and things like that. There are characters tied into there, which I think is quite nice. You've got lots of Resident Evil star characters in there as well, which is good. Um, so lots of different... Yeah, that so there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With these lovely curtains. <laughs> Nothing wrong with curtains. They yeah. did me well during the 90s. Don't you mind? <laughs> uh, I really like the little zombie dog pack as well. I think that's really cool. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a nice little section of stuff for you to play around with. Your zombie distraction. Um, <laughs> Harsh, no, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry let, let's not forget Sophia the Apprentice with yep. Negan and a baseball bat. So, you know, it's the way to do it. Just run yeah. them in hordes of children with Negan, mm. batter one upside yeah. the head every time you need an extra mm. activation. I had no problems with that whatsoever. Oh. Dog, one of them pulling themselves apart as so you've got all the big spiky bones in the middle and everything that's, like that's that. That's very Resident Evil. Very yeah, creepy. Yeah, the infection is mutatings. Yeah. I, re- I really love their little selection of survivors. I think it's a really nice little set. Um, and it's a good the way Christ- for you to... The Christmas runner looks kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Christmas what? Christmas, Christmas runner. runner. Where? There. Uh, top row. Oh, I see, one it. End. I see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. 
jingling all the way and uh-huh. it's, it's the bones <laughs> uh but yeah so like if you want to do a halloween ride use that yeah you've got the bride uh-huh, the, yeah. the bride there want to do a halloween adventure use her you want to do a christmas adventure use the christmas runner um that's what happens but that's, oh, what, that's what actually happens with a black uh, black friday sale <laughs> yeah you you could do some judge dread zombies but he, <laughs> yeah. but he got a bad bad burger yeah the trundle wheel there I've he's never getting his fat ass off that uh mobility scooter <laughs> all you have to do is just stay out of arm reach and you're fine yeah defeated by uh, steps just like a dalek uh wait for the battery to die you'll be fine they have got little zombie young as well so i told yeah. you that's Young what happens lanes. when you throw your zombie distraction. Yeah. <laughs> it oh, comes back a, to bite you. In a widow oh. berry onesie. Yeah. A um, little bits of terrain as well. Always nice yeah. to see. So you've got some uh, some terrain you can sit onto the tabletop and use to kind of uh, fight over and stuff. There's a, I've always, a little bit stranger things. Yeah. I've always thought climbing up a uh, a tower to escape from zombies seems like a really bad idea because they're all just going to sit around the bottom and wait. Yeah, well, we <laughs> so, learned that from Edgar in Tremors. Yes. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's no point going up there. Wouldn't mm-hmm. they eventually decompose, though? Yeah, but, but uh, long, de- long after you. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> yeah. It depends on the zombie mythology you're following. Yeah. Because mm. yeah. there's a few out there where decapitation and, and head killing doesn't stop them so yeah oh i was watching a weird one recently I santa carlita diet oh santa carlita yeah. yeah oh it's so weird never been there i do like the um aesthetic they're going for yeah. with the mm. the sort of caricature-esque mm-hmm. ones yeah i think it really they're works. nice mm-hmm. and a bit different oh no poor zombie punk that is very walking <laughs> dead mm. Is it, or is it more Iron Maiden? No, it's one hundred percent Walking Dead. So I think it actually comes from the comic. Eddie never uh, had a, a lovely mohawk. He just always had the big hair metal hair on him. I would bet at some That's point true. there will be an Eddie style character in here somewhere. <laughs> Damn I love that he's got his uh, eye actually hanging out slightly off the side of his head as well. Pretty cool. Coming so, for yeah. you. Yeah. That's why you always need to keep your children on hand. <laughs> I like the idea of the the workbenches and the jennies as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice to have those little incidental pieces. Yeah. Set them up, use them for sort of in-game upgrades and that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, oh, there's a zombie. There's a zombie. And it's all full of cocaine. (laughs) Uh, I still have to watch Cookie and Bear. Are they doing another one like Crack Raccoon or something? They are, yes. Yeah. Shay enlightened me to that last week. (laughs) <laughs> the important thing to remember is none of it's worth your while. They're they're all the the names sound great. The films themselves are hot garbage. Oh, guaranteed, guaranteed to be shitty, uh, but and, and worse than that, dull hot garbage. Uh-huh. Stop in a wheelchair. Let's put them up in bricks. Surely, surely they should be able to get up and crawl off. Or you would expect them to at the very least fall out of it. Maybe it's a bit like Shaun of the Dead, where they retain some of their of what they were like in life, and so they're like, "Well, I sat in here for both." They of don't realise so, that they could get yeah. up and away. Yeah. Well, most of dogs I, is nice there. Yeah, I do love the the whole selection of zombified animals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you go to a farm in the countryside. You think you're safe? Oh no, wait! The barn is full of zombie horses. Where's no. that sheep? <laughs> sheep and packs. Yes, this is why I we're all glad when the mad cow disease kicked off and it just made them all. Yeah, you know, ridiculous. Then they they found work because because <laughs> if they learn to develop a taste for blood and start hunting in packs, we're all screwed. It's yeah. zombie woodlice you need to watch out for. Yes. Why is that? Then they, they do get everywhere. They get everywhere. They crawl mm. under things. Mm. My yes. shit's full of earwigs at the moment. There, there, there. Uh, surely, I mean, surely, with the best one in the world, zombie woodlice is not going to break the skin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you really. You'd be really annoyed if that's what got you. you? You've survived <laughs> endless zombie attacks, and the zombie wood lice creeps in and bites you. So, uh, so you have to make sure you wear a hat when you go to bed and a mask or yeah. something, just so they can't get in any orifice. Oh. Otherwise, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. I see. There was actually a, a book I read. I can't remember what the name of it was, but it was actually from the perspective of the virus in some oh, chapters. Interesting. Right. So it was it figuring out how to actually, you know, work a rat's body, how to use a rat's body. 
Ooh. And the best way to use that body to infect more creatures. Lovely. So it's set up at a corner selling rat tricks. You know, I wouldn't <laughs> think I was that creepy except for that bloody cat and rat one that we do have that that oh, parasite yeah. that works its way into rats' brains. Mm-hmm. So they get running after cats. That freaks me out. Oh, you just yeah. added five seconds to your it life. Because put, it puts it, it puts mm-hmm, puts it into the world of <laughs> plausible. Yeah. At times. Well, if you look, there is the one that infects insects. So it'll infect an ant and hijack the ant's nervous system to actually make it go back That's to its fungus. colony. So yeah, so yeah. it can spread there. That's the one I'm terrified of, like jumping species. Mm-hmm. You need to stop yeah. hanging around with weird ants, mate. <laughs> Mercifully, it is very far away from me, and I would like it to stay that way. No, the one you want to w- watch out for is the one I'm talking about, the one that's in cats and mice. Or cats well, and I mice. do have a cat, so I'm Because I'm it's screwed. like 80% right. of cat owners or something in America have the parasite in their brain. Oh, shit. But it doesn't do anything in humans currently. Currently. So um, we might end up with the rage virus. Imagine, yeah. imagine if that morphed into something nasty that could take control of humans. I would yeah. say it would make you more cat-like, but that just means you'd lay around. I think I think yourself, I think so. it's happening now because <laughs> I think that might be what the NPC craze is on TikTok. Oh, right. <laughs> no, we're not bringing that back. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, moving on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, definitely check out the stuff from Vault Z. It's very cool. They've got a my manufacturing. They've got a tribes. They've got a Patreon. Uh, well. Oh, it's Gus. Mr. Esposito. He uh, runs Gus, a good Gustavo Fring fried chicken place. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Los manos or por- or per pollos, I rats. think. It is. Zombie rats, see? Yeah. Yes. Chewing away the flesh. Ah. Probably a zombie snake if you get in far enough. Zombie, zombie luchador? Yeah. Or a zombie superhero. <laughs> either is good. Ooh. And the you can either have those there. as veins or you can have them as little tiny worms crawling beneath the surface of his skin. Yeah. Either is fine. Oh, he looks like a fun guy. Mm, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hobo with an AK. Yeah. Best day of his life. Mm. Might not be a hooper. He could, that's he very could, judgmental. He could be either. He could be a zombie or not a zombie. That's like true. <laughs> when he zombie comes with an AK. Best street. day of his own life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So they, as you can see, they've been going for a little while. So yeah, definitely worth having a look at and uh, finding out a little bit more about it. I really it. hope that Tiger King is exactly what I imagine it to be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope it's a, a most exotic miniature. Yes. <laughs> could be. Yeah. All about the meth zombies. Of course, all about all the zombies. Meth, zombies. Meth, meth zombies. Oh god! The good, good thing about them is they don't have much in the way of teeth left to bite you, so you should be okay when the meth zombies come. We should all move to Florida, it's the safest place to avoid the zombie apocalypse. They just try and gum their way at you. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, vaults like oh, crypts, yeah. I imagine. On my manufacturing patron, if Thank you're you. uh, interested in some wombies and survivors, mm-hmm. or even a big A team looking vehicle to just drive through uh, the people, check those out. Did you win one of our prizes? Find out on our prize claim center over at ontabletop.com. Here we list all our previous prizes and those who have won. If you see your username, fill out the form to claim your prize. All prizes must be claimed within 30 days. Right. We have. A pair of uh, Kickstarters. I'll leave you hanging. <laughs> Don't encourage him. Uh, we have two Kickstarters yes. to finish off the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first of which is a touch of the old fantasy. Yes. Arc World. So, uh, Alex Huntley and family have been working on the Arc World fantasy universe for a number of years now. They've designed an amazing game packed with amazing miniatures with wonderful artwork and lore and background that's been developed over the course of numerous expansions and Kickstarters and supplementary books and everything like that. Um, This has all come to uh, a sort of pinnacle of awesomeness for this Kickstarter, which is the Arc World Compendium. So this is a book that's actually been uh, designed by uh, Alex himself that basically clicks together everything that you could ever want to know about the law and the world of the Ark world. Uh, so it's got loads of information there on the different factions. You've got lots of wonderful artwork. 
it's illustrated throughout. Um, they're even starting to work towards various stretch goals that will in sort of improve the book in different ways and give you full art for entire sections of the book, showing off things like the Halflings of Hobbleshire, as you can see there. Uh, and it's not just the classic stuff like the halflings and the orcs and and uh, the the wild elves and things like that. They've also been looking at adding in a few more um, pieces from some of the later expansions. So you've got the Dark Lord there, which is amazing as well. And I'm sure we're going to see even more stuff later on down the line. Uh, you'll be able to get your hands on a physical copy of the book. So you can get yourself a hardback, which will obviously look wonderful on your coffee table and will be a nice repository of knowledge if you want to learn a little bit more about art club before you dive in and start playing uh, but you can also get yourself a digital version of the book as well if that's what you prefer to do uh, and sort of have it stored away in your sort of digital library um, on top of that there's also a couple of cheeky little special things mm -hmm. so if you've never played arc world before and you want to actually dive in and give it a go you can actually get this pledge which gets you the four player starter set for the game uh, where you get mm -hmm. to play as either the Albionicans, the Halflings of Hobbleshire, the Biorks, or the Nasty Troll. You might just be a good troll who's having a bad day, though. So, yeah, you could dive in and pick that up and have some fun with it. Uh, there's also a really nice pledge where you can get your warband into the game. So if you've made a particular warband for one of the factions, then they'll work with you to get them into the book as like a nice little addition to the fiction, which I think is quite nice. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that's been added into the mix as well. As you can see, there, there you go. There's the full page faction illustrations that they've been talking about mm. slotting into there as well, which is quite good. So yeah, if you're a fan of fantasy and you like the whimsical and have enjoyed, you've enjoyed the work of uh, Alex Huntley and co over the last little while, it's definitely worth having a look at this and seeing what you think of it. Um, because it's either going to be a great entry point for you to look at diving into Arcworld and playing the game whilst also learning about the lore, but it's also a great one for veterans who've been stuck with the game, for, well, not stuck, <laughs> who have stuck with the game for the last however many years that they've been working on it, uh, and it's a nice little culmination of all of their efforts in a stunningly... It uh, is 10 years. Book. 10 years. That's so, interesting. Yeah. Uh, and to celebrate that, there's a little birthday halfling. Yay! So you can get yourself a wonderful little Kickstarter exclusive miniature of a halfling Heroes bursting out of a cake. Up to 15. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a little birthday halfling, looking wonderful, with sword and shield at the ready. So it's probably not a birthday surprise that you're going to enjoy. Uh, <laughs> probably take you out afterwards. But they've also been working on a new updated version of the Fire Dragon. So the Fire Dragon was one of the... Uh, early monstrous creatures that were designed by Alex for um, for the warp range, as it was previously known, warp lock. Mm. Uh, and it's been uh, updated there with a brand new sculpt looking absolutely stunning, as you can see. Uh, but yeah, a really nice way to get stuck into the game, or as I say, um, cap off your collection potentially for a little while before you dive in and pick up even more, probably, with uh, successive supplements and everything like that. But yeah. Alex has been doing this for a very long time and uh, it's great. And if you like this and you want to learn more about the, their whimsical world, get that book. Yeah. Great. Sweet right. to the beat. Mm. Only six days left on that. Practically Only. a week. Yeah. Already funded. But if you throw your money that way, you may even get campaign rules. Campaigns. Yeah, yeah. Which I think really uh, in games like that, it's probably a good way of doing it. Yes, it, yeah, building it's longer, a, longer narratives yeah. than just regular sort of pick up and plays because it it's a, really lends itself it, to that. It's a very narratively focused game, mm -hmm. uh, and the rules are kind of open to interpretation to a degree. So, if you want your giant to do something, then you and your opponent sort of agree on what you need to do roll to make that happen. So you might be like, ah, so the giant picks up a tree and smashes you with it. Okay, so you need to roll this on a d8 and whatever and do this attack and that kind of thing. So it's a really nice little cooperative thing for you to dive into and have fun with, which I think is always nice to see with these kind of games. Yeah, so, yeah sweet, like all of the candy. Right, mm -hmm. going from the fantasy into a science fictional world. Yeah. Uh, so Titan Forge games are on Kickstarter at the moment with Grid Wars 2.0. I, I feel like you've got to say it like that. Hmm. Another silly voice for you there to uh, cap off the episode. Uh, so this is a fully printable game from the folks at Titan Forge. They've done something similar to this in the past, 
with Bloodfields, which was their fantasy game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Grid Wars 2.0 is an evolution of Grid Wars from their previous incarnation with a whole host of additional factions for you to pick up uh, alongside an updated and tweaked rulebook and loads of other bits and pieces as well. And this campaign is chock-a-block with various options for you to choose from when it comes to dive in and uh, building up your collection. So coming to the game new, uh, you have the Titan Guard, the Scourge, the Cyphrons, and the mm-hmm. Aura Collective, Aurora Collective, sorry. So they're the new uh, sort of factions that they've added to the game. But these are then just a bolt-on to a huge range of stuff that they developed during uh, Grid Wars 1.0 back in the day. Uh, alongside loads of trains and things that you can see there. Um, the beta rules for Grid Wars 2.0 are actually available for you to go and check out yourself if you're interested mm-hmm. in the game. Uh, it's uh, done using sort of energy action points that you develop, uh, and they can be used for activating units, using their special abilities, um, changing your dice rolls and everything like that. So there's a big focus on you can really focus in on one particular character and sort of push them to their limits and do heroic things with them, or you can sort of spread things out depending on how you want to go about it. And because it's a cyberpunk game, it is full of all sorts of quirky things that you would imagine. So you've got like hacking and all that kind of thing in there as well. Um, and uh, yeah, it's definitely worth having a look at and see what you think of it. Uh, uses the custom dice, as you can see. Mm. and um, which, which you print. Which you print, yes. <laughs> so you can weight them <laughs> in your favor. Which is very um, important in life, I feel. Yes. Um, but yeah, so it's a big, 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 big collection of things for you to go and pick up and have a go at. And uh, as I say, it's nice to see them taking Grid Wars 1.0 and sort of giving it that shuffly little upgrade to make it uh, fun to dive into for yeah. newcomers and also people who've been stuck with it, well, who have stuck with it for a while. <laughs> I'll get okay, those so words you're, around you're the right with way. That. Yes. You're stuck with that, aren't you? Um, uh, yes. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. The um, Bloodfields fantasy game seems to use the same system they some of the the terms are changed slightly so it's inspiration rather than energy yeah um, right. but the idea is uh, alternate activation and you have a, mm-hmm. an amount of energy pool uh, that you can then allocate at the the sort of starting step which allows you to activate units to do specific things whether it's sort of move and shoot or to yeah. do a bit of cy- cyberpunk technological hacking or whatever it happens to be but as you said the the original factions for the the first iteration of it as you can see here are Are really well fleshed out i also really like the fact that they've put things on hexes and multi-hex bases just lean into (laughs) that everybody knows hex means sci-fi that's how it works (laughs) um it also means that you can have lines of sight and and arcs of of fire and that sort of thing as well which i don't think you actually use in this game so it's just a nice feature in this case that they have the little hex bases Uh, but there's some really nice figures within there already that you can sort of add on to it and it is literally print whatever you need to play so you print the dice you print the cards on a, a regular printer not one of your fancy three-dimensional ones you kids um <laughs> i suppose you could see what happened i guess <laughs> you still do, but even things like the measuring sticks oh, uh, I love and the, the tokens and all the rest are in mm. there yeah the the police i mean i know detroit went badly wrong when they had to bring ocp in to to make ed209 and robocop <laughs> but at the point where you need that link um just a belt fed twin machine gun on your your mech bot thing that your police are wandering around with i think it's at that at that point just put a wall around the city and just turn it into prison like new york uh, mm-hmm. that's probably the best bet you know, or portland and i didn't happen uh, yeah or portland Let's see how many other US cities we can slag off at the same time. <laughs> well, I'm very specifically doing it because New York became a prison that was yes, walled yes, off. Yeah. Uh, LA didn't happen, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, it's a work in progress. Uh, the, the, the Yakuza are particularly creepy. I yeah. love the crime boss turtle. Mm-hmm. Mm. So a mixture of cash money stretch goals and social stretch goals as well. So mm-hmm. if you're interested nice. in it, um, you can go and grab the rules and then just start spamming everywhere. Yep. Uh, and even in groups online that don't have anything to do with this particular uh, hobby, you know, quilting, uh, they're good. Nana's good in the easy to get into. All people are very bad at setting up things to prevent spammers from getting in. So mm. start with them, work your way out. Uh, but <laughs> otherwise, yeah, if you've you got the advocate touch of the- spamming the yeah. WI. To yeah. get your Kickstarter oh, campaign yes. off the ground. <laughs> Hang on, is this why we keep getting like spam bots? Is it you? It has it been you all along? 
I mean, mm. I'm not saying it definitely was, um, but there you can see a run through from Grid Wars and, and how the, the games and uh, mm -hmm. the 2.0 actually runs. So you can see a little, I think it's only like a 10 or 12 minute video, uh, 10 minute. So it's very, very quick to get an idea of how it plays out. And you can see how it goes. But there's some really nice bits and pieces. Yeah. Uh, particularly, I mean, the, the terrain, the palm trees in the terrain are particularly funky. Look at the scourge. I painted a load of Malifaux stuff up like that recently. It's still my idea doing mm. harsh lighting at night. They're listening to you. It's the spam oh. bots. <laughs> oh, don't trust Alexa. I, I don't. That's why I don't have one. Alexa, buy pet food. <laughs> See who's listening to this on a speaker at home. I <laughs> once very much annoyed my friend's partner because uh, I his, his Alexa would activate through the through the Facebook chat we were using, mm. and I shouted, "Alexa, play Star Wars theme tune!" And she started doing it. And then my friend, as it wasn't bad enough, went, "Alexa, max volume." <laughs> and his daughter was trying to go to sleep in the next room. <laughs> I know you, you, you see if you're ever at your family's house and they have an Alexa, just set an alarm on it for like four a.m. So that's just me. Is this why you're not invited anywhere anymore? <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of that guy. Sorry. Alexa, tell that's us sweet. 500 jokes. <laughs> Siri, activate self destruct. Uh, all right, I'll see if he's all. Alexa, do you work for the CIA? <laughs> tell, us, tell us 500 jokes oh, at yeah, decreasing cool. levels of quality. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's going to be par for the course, really. But that begin <laughs> from dad joke level. Palm trees yeah. are interesting. They're really they are cool. very cute. Yeah, because it's it's not something you automatically think of, uh, but yeah, when you sort of merge eighties retro cyberpunk mm. aesthetic, palm trees do feature quite heavily in things like yeah. that, the synthwave and all the rest. Come to Cyber Miami. Yeah, and I, I just yeah, there's a nice thing about it. There's another anyway, voice. You can uh, yeah. you can pick up dice. dice for both this and blood fields physically if you don't want to print them out by the way if you're worried about your opponent having left air pockets inside their uh their dice print in some way so they didn't have to bake them uh, so that's all good in the hood but yeah really nice stuff from titan forge yeah um, cracking away for some time Go on are, you, are you sure you don't want to start an npc channel on tiktok with all your voices I so mean, it's three days left on Grid Wars. <laughs> it's already funded. Uh, so yeah, you've got to be quick if you want to get involved in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll move on very quickly from that. Uh, yes. We are done for another week. Uh, you've probably been well done before we even reach this point. God bless you if you've stuck, you are stuck with us. You are stuck with us. If you feel the need, the need for more of us. We are back on Sunday morning over on mm -hmm. tabletop.com. You can join us for the Cult of Games XLBS show uh, where we went our it. hobby and weights and measures apparently Ooh, this week. Ooh, Cult of Games, so good. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to hear that, then you can join <laughs> us again next Friday uh, for more of the same. But until then, have a great week of gaming. Bye. -bye. Bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.